I'm Timothy Snyder, and I'm, I'm doing a little video series now, probably going to be called Timothy Snyder Speaks About on Tyranny. I'm returning to the little tradition from uh, three and a half years ago or so when I gave short political videos, which people still seem to be watching. And I'm returning to it for a particular reason, which is that it's been a number of years since I wrote The Lessons of On Tyranny. I've written a couple of books since then. And a, an updated text of On Tyranny is going to appear as an illustrated book, as a graphic book in October of 2021. So I've been working on this together with Nora Krug, the, the wonderful illustrator. And, and so I thought it would be a good occasion for me to return to the lessons and to say something about the last five years or so and, and the years to come. I'm going through this lesson by lesson. Today is lesson number seven, which is be reflective if you must be armed. If you carry a weapon in public service, may God bless you and keep you. But know that evils of the past involve policemen and soldiers finding themselves one day doing irregular things. Be ready to say no. I'm not going to say much about this lesson because it comes close to being a pure moral call. It comes close to being a simple appeal. There are people who bear arms in our public life. There are people who represent our, our, our government and our laws by, by bearing arms. And this lesson is a very simple appeal. I'm going to say one word about where it comes from, and I'm going to say one word about the future. This is going to be a short one, though. Where it comes from is our misunderstanding of the Nazis. We like to talk about the Nazis as though the Nazis were a set of bad people who we can then just kind of separate from the rest of us, the rest of the Germans, the rest of the world. The Nazis somehow mysteriously appeared in 1933, mysteriously disappeared in 1945. But the Nazis, that, that evocation of that phrase doesn't explain how nearly 6 million Jews were murdered. It doesn't explain how nearly 3 million Soviet prisoners of war were starved to death. It doesn't explain mass atrocity, talking about the Nazis, thinking of bad people. The German police, and I mean just the regular police, the order police, um, the people who would ordinarily be patrolling the streets and who went back to patrolling the streets of Germany after they'd done, their, done the awful things in the East, the German police took part in every major massacre of the Holocaust, every, every one beyond a certain size. The German armed forces, despite the legends about them, also took part in the Holocaust and were the agent of starving millions of people to death. We, 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 we prefer not to see those institutions too closely, because if we did, we'd have to ask about, about institutions, which is what this lesson is about. It's reminding people in the armed forces, it's reminding policemen and others who bear arms that this is the history. This is where you can end up. Um, you can end up in a terrible place, and awareness of the history can help you think about the point where you might say no. I want to close by saying perhaps something unexpected about the future. It's not enough for me or you to say to the police, to the armed forces, be reflective. Of course, they should be. That's their duty. And as I said in the earlier lesson about professional ethics, these collectivities, these groups have to develop an ethic which goes beyond just what power is asking them to do. But we also have to help them. It's, 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 not, it's too much to expect that other people reflect if, if reflection isn't happening at a higher level or in a broader way. What do I mean by that? I mean two things. The first, as I said when I talked about the last lesson, lesson is that we need an investigation many investigations with historians, with digital forensics experts, um, with people with all kinds of expertise. We need a number of investigations of what happened on January 6th. Not least so, policemen, police women, members of the armed forces can read those papers, think for themselves about how it got to that point, how they would have behaved, how they should have behaved. Because whatever we say about January 6th, Something was desperately wrong when an armed mob calling for murder breaks through the, the, the doors and windows of our Congress. 
Something was wrong, which has to do not just with the armed mob, but which has to do with the police and the armed forces and, and with us. And so my point is, as we ask these people to be reflective, we also have to give them something upon which they can reflect, which would mean, importantly, reports about the 6th of January. The second thing about reflection has to do with the press. And this might be even more unexpected, but it's really, really important. One of the worst things which has happened to us as a country is that we've lost our local press. We've lost our local newspapers. Most of the country is a news desert. And that means that people don't know if local politicians are corrupt or how they're corrupt. It means that people don't know if their water is polluted or not. And it means that people don't know, unless they have personal knowledge, they don't know if particular members of the police are behaving badly. That's the kind of thing that reporters know about before the rest of us know about. So what I'm trying to say is that among the, among the hundreds of important functions that a local press used to serve, one of them was keeping track of the police, or to put it in a more neutral way, helping the police keep track of themselves. So in order for us to be reflective about a nation in general in particular, we have to have ways to reflect. We have to have investigations. Investigations can be national investigations, but they can also be local everyday investigations carried, about, carried out by reporters. As a country, we have to be able to be more reflective. And the police and George Floyd and the murder of African Americans, those are things which can be understood in terms of racism. They can be understood in terms of particular police officers, and that's, that's all valid but they can also be understood as a failure of reflection, a failure of communication, as we lose the ability to see our own localities, as we lose the possibility of following through the eyes of reporters what happens in this precinct, what happens in this neighborhood. When we lose that, then those kinds of events are also more likely. So it's like everything else. We can ask people to do the right thing, to be reflective, but we also have to make it easier for them to do the right thing. We have to give them ways to reflect. This was lesson seven, be reflective if you must be armed. Thank you.